Jerry and his wife Holly are on their way home. She's mad at him, and Jerry messed up big but couldn't figure out what he did. He apologizes and asks what he did, but she stays quiet until they reach home. She says it's because he told her mother that she wasn't ready for the baby while he was okay with it. She also mentions how he missed the fact that they were both saving up and were planning to wait until they had enough to buy a home. He finds it funny with her changing five jobs in the last two years, and she mentions how he got a business loan behind her back. Jerry thinks thinks that is the main reason why she is angry and with him driving limos for the past four years. He and his friend John got the loan to start their own business. She worries how she hates her job as a real estate agent and if his business does not work out what will happen to them. Holly asks him to be honest with her and what he really means is that this is not the life he wanted. Jerry blows over hearing this and asks her to be honest with him. He tells her that what he wants is in his arms right now but does she feel the same way? Holly asks him to leave if he wants to and they go at each other not being honest with themselves and finally having enough of this, Jerry heads out. A few seconds later, Holly peeks out to see Jerry come back in and they jump into each other's arms. Holly keeps worrying since her mom never really liked Jerry and Jerry tells her to stop worrying and that they have to start living their life soon. He mentions that he will not leave her and he is not like her dad who left her and her mom. Hearing about her dad, Holly becomes sad and goes to sleep but Jerry dances to cheer her up. With the turn of events, Holly smiles and the night ends with laughter. A few days later, Holly's mom Patricia tells Daniel to take care of the arrangements in the bar, and soon a group of people gather. We see Holly sitting there as well, and we learn that Jerry has passed away, and the officiant mentions how Holly personally designed the urn. Jerry's friend, John, starts the farewell, followed by the rest, while Jerry's favorite song is played. At this time, Holly's sister Sierra enters the bar with a suitcase, and greeting her mom and sister, she goes forward to bid her farewell to Jerry. Soon the party begins, and Denise, one of Holly's friends, walks around looking for a man, but the first one turns out to be gay, the second doesn't have a job, and the third guy was not a good kisser. As this happens, Patricia speaks with Holly's colleague, Sharon, about how she called Jerry's parents in Ireland, but they didn't come since his father had just undergone an operation. Holly finds Sierra to tell her it would have been alright if she hadn't come all this way from Australia. Sierra tells her that she left it all back, and also mentions that Jerry wrote to her a couple months ago that she had to drop by. Right then, Daniel comes asking how Jerry passed away and we learn that it was brain tumor. A while later, Patricia asks Holly to stay with her and her sister but she declines. Holly goes back home with the urn and calls Jerry's phone to hear his voice on the voicemail. She gets on bed in tears while she keeps calling him. A few days go by and Holly checks her messages from her family and friends who are worried since she hasn't contacted anyone. The next night, Holly sings along to the song on the telly and we notice a few women coming in. It takes a few seconds for Holly to notice that her family and friends are looking at her with a shocked expression. They wish Holly a happy birthday, and Sharon asks her not to be like this. The others feel the same as well, and Holly goes in to wash up while they clean the place. Sharon tells Holly that she told their boss that they will get back to work after a week. Soon, Sierra comes walking in saying that Holly's got a delivery. They open the box to find a cake signed from Jerry. Everyone's confused, and Holly asks them to stop as John hands her the cassette player from the box. They hear Jerry's voice from the tape explaining that he prepared this gift for her with not having the heart to say goodbye to her. He also mentions that he has scheduled letters to be sent to her starting from the next day and asks Holly not to think about anything else and just enjoy the day. He also addresses Patricia and the others to help her make the plans. Denise and Sierra leaves to plan the night and sometime later, we see the ladies going to a gay club, but they are denied entry. Sierra conveys their situation situation and moved by the story, the ones waiting in line ask them be let inside. They have good time at the club, and later we see Sierra teaching the snapping game she learned at the club to the others. And Daniel finds Holly drunk inside the storeroom. He closes the door with her still inside, however, she manages to grab him and pulls him instead. She asks him what he thinks about her husband dying. Daniel mentions how we cannot decide on everything, and he even points out how his fiance left him for a woman the previous year. He tells her that he is attracted to her, but Holly ends up puking right there. Daniel carries her to Patricia's place upstairs. The next day, Holly wakes up to her phone ringing, and Sharon explains what they did the previous night and reminds her about the letter that Jerry mentioned in the cassette. Holly runs home to find the letter. Her next task is to get herself a new dress and be ready by the time she gets her next letter. With a smile on her face, Holly runs upstairs, and the day ends with her on bed, still thinking about the time Jerry was still there. The next 
next time we see Holly is when she is at her job as a real estate agent. She gets into a fight with the missus trying to force her husband to buy the property, and Holly loses her job after such a show. A few days later, a leprechaun delivers her the next letter and mentions that he was told to sing a song, but Holly takes the letter and closes the door. The task this time is that she has to go perform on karaoke that month. Holly refuses to go but Jerry reminds her how she performed last time, but unfortunately, she tripped on the wires and falls off the stage. Jerry comforts her that she sang really good, but she makes it clear that it was all because of him. Jerry goes in for a kiss but Holly gets mad and avoids him. Following this, Holly can be seen discussing the matter with John and Sharon, who share the same views of Jerry and suggests that she perform. It is the night of the performance and the crew get together as Holly is announced to be the next performer. She goes on stage dedicating the act to Jerry, and as she starts singing, all she can see is Jerry alone in front of her. Holly gives a heartfelt performance, and later, Denise gets along with the MC. She learns that his name is Tom, and owns a bar. At this happens, Daniel approaches Holly to let her know what he thought about her singing. He offers to get her a drink, but she declines. We jump to the next day. Holly receives her next letter along with a leather jacket. Jerry mentions how he loved his jacket on her, and asks her to keep it and make some space for her in the apartment. She makes up her mind and sends his stuff over to his parents. Time flies, and when the mailman comes by to drop the letters, Holly waits right there like a hawk to grab hers. She goes along with John and they go find a woman named Barbara. Holly hands her the letter, and Barbara recognizes her as Jerry's wife. Next up, we see Patricia, hearing how Jerry had planned a vacation for Holly, Sharon, and Denise. Patricia asks about Daniel, and Holly makes it clear that he's just a friend. Patricia tells her not to go, but Holly insists on going since Jerry planned everything for her. Patricia tells her that Jerry is not here anymore, and he cannot send the letters forever. Holly makes it clear that her husband died unlike her dad who left on his own. They end up having an argument about the whole thing, and Sierra drops in to calm things down. They fly over to Ireland, and the ladies reach the house Jerry arranged for them. Sharon walks up front and asks the others to take their luggage in, but she calls them in as she finds a letter addressed to her. Denise goes in looking if Jerry placed a letter for her too. Jerry wrote to Sharon and Denise with their itinerary, but Holly feels a little sad that she didn't get a letter. Later, they visit a pub, and they find the guy who just performed attractive. Sharon and Denise suggest Holly approach the guy, and giving in Holly approaches him even though she doesn't like the idea. She tells him that she loved the song and that he is handsome. She introduces herself and that she is here on vacation with her friends. His name is William, and he asks her to watch him as he goes up to perform another song. He dedicates the song to Holly, and she feels jolly, but as soon as he starts, she is reminded about Jerry singing the same song for her. Holly leaves outside and asks her friends what was Jerry thinking to plan everything for them and how she can see him everywhere. We move on to the next day, and the ladies are on a boat fishing. As a fish takes the bait, Sharon rushes Holly to reel it in, and in that chaos, Denise pushes the oars out on the water. They realize it soon and yell for help, but clearly, they are the only ones out there. They inflate their life jackets and just waiting there for someone to find them. Unexpectedly, Sharon reveals that she is pregnant, and Denise follows up that she is getting married to Tom on New Year's Eve. They scream in joy, but Holly feels down being left alone. Sometime later, a boat approaches them, and we notice William from last night on it. Reaching back to the house, they offer him dinner while they learn that William volunteers as a guard. Sharon and Denise ask him stay the night. He accepts their offer and heads in to shower. The ladies go upstairs as Holly stays back to clean the dishes. She wants to go up, but hears her friends chatting about their lives ahead, and Holly goes back to pour herself a drink. At this time, William walks out from the shower, and Holly sees him in his birthday suit. William is startled since the door is open, and Holly is speechless. William walks out a minute later after getting dressed, and Holly jumps to kiss him, and flustered, she goes nonstop about her situation. William picks her in his arms, and they do the deed. After that, Holly asks him drive her to some place in the morning. Hearing the address, William recognizes the name and asks if she is Jerry's Holly. Startled, Holly questions him, and William reveals that he was in the band with Jerry. Holly feels weird, but William consoles her it's alright, and asks if she wants to hear stories about Jerry from their childhood. The next day, Holly reaches her in-law's place. Jerry's parents Martin and Rose welcome her inside and they show Holly the letter they received from Jerry after his diagnosis. Rose reads the part where Jerry asked them to take Holly to his spot in their backyard. Martin then hands Holly her next letter and they apologize for not being there for his funeral. Holly apologizes for taking him away from them
them, but Rose says it's all right since she knew how much Jerry loved her. Following this, Holly takes the letter and goes to the spot Jerry mentioned in the letter. In the letter, he goes over how he stood there on the day they met on the road randomly for the first time. Holly was lost, and in trying to show her the way, he learned a lot about her, and eventually, he realized that he fell in love with her. He gives her his jacket and lets her know how he feels, but she gets flustered and tries to leave. But she stops to give his jacket back, but a dog approaches them. Jerry uses this opportunity to hold her still, saying it is a wild dog and it might bite her if she moves. But Holly sees the collar on the dog, and realizing what he's trying to do, she goes ahead to kiss him. As they are lost in that feeling, they are interrupted by a passerby, and Holly takes this chance to leave. He doesn't want to let her go, but she runs off yelling that they will meet if they are meant to be. Back to the present, Holly heads back home after the vacation, but she avoids contacting anyone. A month goes by like this, and one day Holly gets a call from Denise saying she is not invited to her wedding. In a fit, Holly throws the remote at the phone but hits a picture instead. So, she goes to pick it up but notices Jerry's pin on the table fall on her shoe. Holly gets inspired from this and decides to start designing shoes. She fills the room with papers full of multiple designs and she starts learning to do this. After several days, Holly finally goes to find Denise who's out getting fitted for her wedding dress. She lets Holly know how much she tried to get hold of her and she could use some help. Holly apologizes and Denise gives her a piece of her mind. They make up and Holly asks to make her wedding shoes and reveals that she has been taking some classes to design them. That day, she meets up with Daniel to discuss about her venture, but in the middle of their conversation, she ends up calling him as Jerry. He tells her that he wants her to see him as Daniel and leaves. Holly feels bad about treating him that way and leaves in tears to find Patricia. She cries her heart out to her mom. Patricia takes her outside for a walk and explains how hard it feels alone in a room full of people. Following this, she hands Holly her final letter and tells how Jerry asked her to send the letters and made her promise not to tell Holly about anything. She leaves after letting her know that the decision is hers, and later that night, we find Daniel taking Holly to visit the new Yankee Stadium. She hands him the final letter and asks him to read it to her. Daniel reads Jerry's final words, asking her not to be afraid to fall in love again, and Daniel goes up to her, asking if she's ready to move on. Holly moves forward to kiss him, but they don't feel the spark and decide on being friends instead. She hugs him to mention how she doesn't feel Jerry anymore, and he is really gone now. Moving on with Denise's wedding and Sharon giving birth, Holly takes Patricia to Ireland. On their way, Holly comes across William and Patricia gets swayed on seeing his father, and they head on their ways since they'll be around for a while. Let me know in the comments how you'll feel getting a letter from someone who's not around anymore, and I shall meet you again with another story like this. Until then, this is your host for Movie Movie Recap signing off.